What's going on everyone? This is Scrabble up here, and today I'm going to be talking about Elden Ring. Not, I might play Elden Ring, but I mainly want to talk about Elden Ring. Because recently, I think it was today, it might have been yesterday, mainly today, it won. Oh. <laughs> it won Game of the Year of 2022. Because my god, it's a fucking adventure, my god. I played this game back when it, I didn't play it like right when it released, I played it, I think it was April, I want to say April, but I don't know, but it was, the only game I bought like day one was Dying Light 2, and we all know how that turned out, but Elden Ring beat the shit out of the Game of the Year awards and walked away with the prize of Game of the Year, and and that is fucking awesome, and you know, if you know me, if you've been following the channel for a while, I'm a fanboy of all the Souls games. I've been playing them a long time. I Bloodborne is like one of my favorite games like ever. And I knew I instantly I was going to love this game. I'm just saying like it, wh how I felt when I when it's first played and how how it pretty much shaped out how it would be back in back yesterday or today during the Game of Year awards. But <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to think about the open world, but we all know it is now. Oh, the open world's amazing. And yeah, it's such a good game. 10 out of 10, 100% recommend it. But it's like, it's like the one game I played in the longest time that kept its promises right. It promised a lot, and it delivered those promises like perfectly. Sure, there are flaws. Like some enemies are like like copy and pasted and reskinned, but it doesn't kill the game. Everything is just unique in this game, and like from design. If you see around, look at this. It is so cool, and and I gotta say this is like the best game the since like sort of like years, because I haven't had to play a game that that actually earned a ten out of ten from me. I never played a game. That blew me away so quickly, like Elden Ring. This game, it, it stuck with me. I beat it like, I think three, three, four, five times. <laughs> I have no life. And I remember the first time I got stuck on Mel 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 Melania. I think that's her name. I fucking I haven't played against against her in a while. And I remember how much that made me want to kill myself. Oh, but oh my god. Also, I just love the time back back where people were complaining about the game being awful because it had no easy mode. Screw them. This game don't need an easy mode. <laughs> it's the easiest, the easiest Souls game to pick up and start playing, and I don't, I don't find that bad. It's e it's easy to. Oh, it's hard as fuck. Obviously, it's a Souls game, but it's perfectly, perfectly balanced. To what your playstyle is, your playstyle, like, well, mage, mage build is fucking broken, but <coughs> and bleed was broken at launch, but, but like everything is fair, and every like, it depends on how good are you you are at the game. You could be absolutely amazing at the game and beat it completely, or you could be terrible at it and die. But we you gotta understand, this game is one hundred percent fair you can overcome everything in this game and that's what's amazing about the souls games in general because you can overcome any obstacle or challenge or anything because nothing is impossible in these games sure it's hard as hell but you gotta admit in real life if you're fighting against a giant dragon or fighting against um a, a crazy guy with a sword and he becomes this giant beast beast or something sorry for the spoilers the elden beast <laughs> well it's gonna be hard because do you think you can swing a sword, like, perfectly, first try? No, you're not. You're not going to swing the sword perfectly, ever. Even no matter how how trained you are, you're going to mess up and you're going to stumble, which makes the game way more, way more, way, way, way more interesting. This game does not, I cannot say enough praise for this game. This game is like, oh my god, I, I, okay, okay. I was just mainly going to say how, I was just mainly going to congratulate how good this game is and say how, I'm happy that it got Game of the Year. Sure, because God of War Ragnarok was hard to go against because I never played it. I really want to play it a lot, but Elden Ring, my God. 
It's one of those games that are so special to me. I remember struggling in the beginning and overcoming it, and it became one of the games I can slide through pretty easily. Oh my god. It's so fucking cool. But, like, I think you heard all the reviews online. You heard everything you need to know. But this is my video. This is my channel. And I'm going to fanboy over a game that's in a series that's, like, some of my favorite games ever made. So... <laughs> the only thing I got to complain about about this one game I've been playing for like nine months is oh, is it nine months? I don't know, probably ten. I don't know. I, I think it came out in February. I probably played it in March or April. I started playing. Set. The only thing that was bad: some of the dungeons were copy and pasted, and some of the en some of the enemies from other dun dungeons are used, and some like common enemies you run into the open world are used to use as bosses. Which I don't complain about. It's a good way to get XP really early. But it's kind of dumb. Like you fight a boss that you're going to see later on. And you're going to see it more often than you see. It's like it's like in Bloodborne. When you have to play against the... You have to fight against, what is it called? The Shadows of Yarnum. The Shadows of Yarnum, they're like the most com like some of the most common enemies like later on in the game. But you have to fight three of them, which sucks. Because you don't know how, to, how they're going to react. You don't know how they're going to fight. But... The bosses really shows how the enemies will react, which makes the the encounters you meet with them way easier. Which I I'm it's like I'm one of the few people that don't complain about. I'm one of the few people that don't complain about the copy and pasting of enemies like random enemies like common enemies into dungeons. The only thing I did not like was the constant use of the watchdogs, but that was that was it because I wasn't a common enemy. But there was like the use of the pumpkin heads and stuff, but like. <laughs> But it really does help you understand those big bot and those big enemies and see like see you don't need to be scared of it. That's beautiful by the way. Look at that fucking tree. You can see every design on it from over here. But uh, I can't give this game enough praise, man. I'm just talking about it and I'm just happy that it got game of the year. I've said that so many times. I uh, I I have nothing but off. Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, but man, this game is just perfect. It's like one of those few games I actually gave a 10 out of 10. Like, I don't rate games 10 out of 10 so often. Like, like um, I think the last game I gave 10 out of 10 was Bloodborne, which is it's my second favorite video game ever made, which my first one is Red Dead Redemption 1. Nothing can top Red Dead Redemption 1, but Bloodborne is, like, in second place because it's such an amazing game. It's such an amazing experience. Same with this game. This game lived up to that. It, it had so much to live up to before the past games because the recent game, Sekiro, being an amazing game as it is, really hard, but really doable and amazing using newer mechanics that no one used. And it just got better. <laughs> or like, later on, like, the game starts to get more fast-paced since, like, Dark Souls... Dark Souls used to be really slow. It used to be really slow. It used to be like, like janky and stuff. It's still janky as hell, because it makes sense. You're jumping around in armor and stuff, but it was like way slower. It was way jankier. Like the same move sets most of the time, and then it started moving up. And we had Dark Souls Two, which was I think it was pretty good. Most people didn't like it that much, and then we moved on to into Bloodborne, which introduced fast paced gameplay. That pretty much took over the dark, the Dark Souls and the Souls games, from then on. Because we all know, fast-paced Souls games are the best Souls games. So, and also big enemies. And then we had Dark Souls Three, which I, I, I'm honestly one of those people that didn't like it. I loved the DLC, but I wasn't one that enjoyed Dark Souls Three so much. And then Sekiro, which is amazing. We don't count it as a Souls game because it's kind of its own thing, but it made by the same developer. <coughs> Excuse me. It was made by the same developer, but it was pretty much a different project. It was pretty much different from all the other games, but it was just, like, hard. You knew it was going to be hard. And then all the announcements for Elden Ring came out. And then Elden Ring did come out. And, yeah, it pretty much smashed a bunch of games that came out before out of the water. Because these are the games I know about that came out in twenty twenty beginning of 2022. Horizon Forbidden West. I never played it, but I heard it was good. And Dying Light 2. Which is a good game, but it was released at a poor condition. It's way better now, but it was released poorly. <laughs> but like, but like they were doomed to fail because Elden Ring was was. <laughs> it came out like right after, and everyone knew that 
because actually every Souls game comes out with like close, like always being nominated for Game of the Year. I think even Dark Souls Two did. I don't know. I didn't play Dark Souls around that time. I started playing him back in 2017, and played on after that. But yeah, uh, I think I'm just rambling now. What the fuck? <laughs> because the thing is, I love Souls games. I love them a lot. The thing is about me, I play too much of them, pretty much. And right now, I'm just gonna compl I'm just gonna rant about. No, I'm not gonna rant. I'm not gonna ranting about bad things. I'm just gonna fanboy over all the games because it's pretty much. It's my channel. You can watch. You cannot watch. But you don't have to. But you could. So, the game. Elden Ring. Masterpiece. Pretty much, it got nominated for its art style. Which I find, like, like the gameplay also. But art style. And I gotta say, look at that shit. I'm so happy it got nominated for art style. It's like... My god, like, the art style is perfect. Like, perfect. It doesn't have to be photorealistic to be a really, really good game. Like, it does look phenomenal, close to realistic. But it looks like a fantasy realm, and my god, that music's really hurting my ear. <laughs> I might switch for locations one sec. Much better. And also something that people saw a lot when they played the game, when they got to the first boss. Market the Phil Omen, which I beat on my second try because I'm a really, really good ga my gamer. <laughs> I died the first time because I fell off the cliff, so. Shh. But. <laughs> but, like, my god. I can't give this game enough praise, so I'm just going to talk about <laughs> the other Souls games. <laughs> Leading up to Elden Ring. So, Dark Souls. When Dark Souls came out back in 2011, I think 2011. 2012, yeah, 2012. It was kind of shot out of the water because of of Skyrim. Skyrim is still an amazing game. I will play it probably sooner or later. Probably on the channel too because it's I have it downloaded and I love the game a lot. I might even do videos on this game. I already do streams on Bloodborne a lot, so yeah, why not? So So Dark Souls I love the story to every single one, but Dark Souls was special to me because that was like the first Souls game I played. And and it's pretty much, like, the gameplay, it's kind of a hit or miss for most people. Because it's janky. The The movesets are kind of weird. The original Dark Souls only had four-way dodge. Because, <laughs> now it introduced eight-way eight -way dodge for um the remake, the remasters and stuff. But, like, like just the story. The story about the fire and, and the, the, um, the king and stuff. It's just so interesting. And the good boy with the sword. Rest in peace. And Dark Souls 2. Eh. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Demon Souls. God damn. Demon Souls, it's a game that's hit or miss for me. I really, really like the remake, but... I don't know. I mainly like that game for its visuals, and the gameplay was pretty fun, but... Some of the bosses were kind of generic, and they were like most of them were like mostly humanoid enemies. I mainly like the big giant enemies in most of these games. That's why I really, really, really love Bloodborne. It's all because I'm a big fan of the Lovecraftian side of the whole thing. Oh, I dropped something, <sighs> but like, like Dark Dark Souls Two, or oh, not Dark Souls Two, Demon Souls. It is a very interesting game. Don't get me wrong. It is very cool. Well, and I, I fucking hate that dragon part, but like it's a game that that's fun to play, and I think you should all. I, I think you should just play all the Dark Souls games once in a while. Um, Dark Souls Two, uh, it it released very poorly with bugs and some. They made some decisions that did change the the games for now, for then on, for the future, but. It it did it did release pretty bad, like you have to pretty much have to get the 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 re-release part, like the remake the re no, I keep saying remake remaster <coughs> part, because the the original game is really really buggy, and it's it's kind of hard to go back to to play it just for nostalgia's sake for the for the re, for the original, and Bloodborne, which is the game that came out after. I can go on an hour-long, like, rant on how much I love Bloodborne, but I'm going to keep it to, like, two minutes. 
<laughs> this game, this video is gonna be long. I'm just gonna be talking about the, the the Souls games and how much I loved it. But like, Bloodborne, it's pretty much the game that brought a total a totally different like or the aesthetic to the whole game. It brought it brought like love like Lovecraftian horror, not Lovecraftian horror. It brought Victorian era. Uh, like architecture and clothing and monsters and, and like some of the mo most of the monsters are like Lovecrafty and like mythology. Not love fucking Lovecrafty. Uh, uh, it's it like it talks about Victor Victorian era like like stories and stuff like Lycanthrope, which is a werewolf, and man beasts and stuff, which is so fucking cool. In the gameplay, I that game. Okay, okay, petition. That game needs to be remade. For the PS5 and needs a PC port. I play on PS5, but it needs a PC port and a PS5 release so it can run at 60 frames per second and higher definition graphics. Please, from software, listen to me. <laughs> and also, like later in the game, and like spoilers ahead, you figure out that you're the bad guy and you're killing things that are actually innocent. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. The spoilers are done. Um. But, like, I love how it, like, transfers from, like, uh, another Souls game to a completely different thing, like, Lovecraftian horror. Which does it so perfectly. And it's, like, one of those few games that actually takes Lovecraftian horror to a better to a better extent than most games. Like, we don't talk about Call of Cthulhu. We don't talk about The Sunken City. They were good ideas, but they were kind of ruined by the, the, by the people trying to go so much into Lovecraft. But if you understand Lovecraft, you, you will definitely love Bloodborne, because... I have the complete fiction. I I read like 90% of it. I haven't read the entire thing because it's absolutely fucking long. But it's one of those sto it's one of those things where it like really takes takes over like kind of messes with your brain. And most things in Bloodborne messes with your brain. And I like that the healing is with blood and there's actual lore to the blood vials like how people use it for healing, but people got addicted to it. And then they got so addicted to it, they became the beasts. The beasts of the city that you're supposed to kill. Oh, and you're trying to go in to find a blood cure for something. I, I don't know. I don't have to go into so much detail. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to go on a rant about this whole game. Uh, I forgot to talk about Elden Ring. <laughs> yeah, game of the year. Hello. Then Dark Souls 3. I don't really want to talk about Dark Souls 3. Because it, it, really, it really is one of those games that has like a really, really, really loyal fan base. And if they hear me say it's not not my favorite Dark Souls game, they're gonna like smite me from the heavens. So I'm gonna move on. Um, I'm not gonna count Sekiro, cause Sekiro, that is an amazing game, but I'm not gonna count it because I don't count it as a Souls game. I count it as some other 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 type of game that that the Dark Souls creators made from Soft. So I'm not gonna count that. And then we move on to the Elden Ring. Which I already said before, the, like probably the most perfect game of theirs, and pretty much, I'm pretty much every promise I remember them making, I saw it in the game, and like they promised like many different things, like like an expansive open world like, that's gonna be really interesting to interesting to explore, and you'll always find something new. That is true. I'm still finding new things in this game, and and I think it's amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> The music. The the thing. Oh, awesome. Music. Music in all the Souls games are amazing. It's probably like, like some of the best like soundtracks and um, like some of my favorite soundtracks in any game. Not counting Silent Hill. But in any game. I count the, the Souls games all in like one package because I love them all and I listen to the Bloodborne soundtracks often. So I'm going to count them all in one. They're in second place, top, like second place right behind the Silent Hill soundtrack. I count them all mixed together too, because all the Silent Hill soundtracks are really good. <coughs> um, and third place is the Red Dead Redemption games, but like, and Hollow Knight. I mean, fourth. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Shut up. Um, but yeah, it, it it kept its promises, and that's probably why it deserved a game of the year, because it it was loyal to its fan base, and also. It listened to what people had to complain about in the years and picked up what they learned. Pretty much, it started off from Dark Souls, and then when it later on, like Dark Souls 2, 3, like Bloodborne also, 
Oh, like it, like learned. It, they learned from their mistakes. They learned new concepts of gameplay, and they and they mashed it into Elden Ring, pretty much. They mashed it into this big package, which goes perfectly because it has the Dark Souls formula, but it's its own thing. It's not in the Dark Souls universe, I don't think, because I don't see any. Re- I never saw any reference to the original Dark Souls. Like there was no like fire or anything. It's kind of its own thing. Like it's just. It's it's a it's a place with a ring and the ring was the cause of the chaos or something. Oh my god, I, I keep ranting. <laughs> Not a bad rant. It was just me loving the game. Okay, you know what guys? Shut the fuck up. I love this game. One of my favorite games so far. And I was talking because I like I lo- I like video games and I love the Souls games. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I've been I've been talking for ten minutes. Just ranting about a <laughs> little ring. But, like, it's just perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And I am so happy that it got nominated for... It got... It won Game of the Year. It is... Elden Ring is Game of the Year of 2022. We're going to be seeing that on it when we buy it. God of War Ragnarok. I haven't played it. But I heard it's really, really good. And God of War is, is like, in my top ten favorite games ever. So... I don't know. It it takes a lot to beat God of War, but like, like Elden Ring, it like it like knocked everything out of the park. Like it's op- like the open world aspect. It's mainly what blew me away, because it like it wasn't like every other open world. It wasn't like a like a Ubisoft, the Ubisofts or the uh, what are other games? The 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 Rock Stars, the Rock Stars of the world. They were kind of its own thing. It was from Soft, from Soft made. A open world that was from soft, from software, and they 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 executed it perfectly. There's like there's nothing in the open world that's boring. I always find something interesting. Even me just going around and killing a bunch of sheep is interesting because it's funny because they roll around. There's so much detail. There's so much there's so much stuff to explore. There's so many cool monsters. The monster design. Oh my god, it is so amazing. Like, some of the things... Sure, they might look weird. Like, when you go into the swamps, there's some of those frog-looking people with the weird faces and stuff. But that's kind of... But that's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like, monsters are weird. But they... But every monster... Like, Big Boss... Big Boss... Like, has a, has an extinct soundtrack. Like, the soundtracks to every boss is amazing. And the, and the design of them are amazing, too. Like, the Elven Beast. Sure, it was a disappointing boss. But it was, like... It was good looking. I thought it was really good looking. It looks like a celestial being, like a cloud. It looks Lovecraftian. So, yeah, I think I think I need to stop, or else I'm gonna have, end up drying out my throat. So, but I'm gonna conclude this by saying, Elden Ring, you definitely deserved the Game of the Year. You definitely deserved to walk away with Game of the Year, and you are you are a perfect game, and I don't think anything can top what you did. Because what you did was phenomenal, and I can't find another game that that tops that perfectly on how they did it. Because their open world is perfect, every monster design is good, every monster fight is unique. Like, there's different ways to go into every fight, there's different builds you can do. I haven't talked about the builds, but I, I don't want to keep have this hour be an hour long, this video to be an hour long. Because, but like, you was, there's different ways, there's different approaches to every battle, there's different approaches just to the game in general, which makes the game makes the game perfect for every person because every person has a different fighting style, which makes the game perfect. So, in conclusion, it de- it deserved game of the year, blah blah blah, and yeah, I'm I'm gonna get off now because if I keep going, I'm gonna be talking for like an hour. So yeah, this is this been Cry Wolf, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and buy Elden Ring because it's an amazing game and it deserves it. And it earned Game of the Year, so you should probably play the Game of the Year. So yeah, uh, that's it. See ya.